what you call as within or what is what you call as me is an entire universe and that's the only universe you've experienced. You have not experienced any other universe. The only and only universe and the only and only world that you have experienced is what has happened within you. We're such a result-oriented people and culture. I gotta have my, 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 my result and we, we, <laughs> we, if I just get to the top of that summit, I'll, I'll have the ta-da moment. And we get to the top of the summit, we see it's a false summit. There's, there's millions of more summits on the other side. <laughs> you keep climbing and there's another one. You, I, there's not a ta-da moment where we go, ah, I've got it, all figured out. I think we, also, we get caught up so often in short-term gains and short-term return choices that give us short-term return on our own investment, us. And we don't, we're not making choices that are, that are going to buy us delayed gratification, not only longer in this life, but after we're gone for our kids and their, our grandkids and our great, great grandkids. Um, so it's all a process is, is, is what I'm hearing from that and what, the, how, I'm, how I'm choosing to take that line. It's all a process. Enjoy the process. You do not ever get there. That's the point. That keeps you the game, because if you got there, the game's <laughs> over. See, the finish line, everybody is interested too much in finish line, especially in the Western world, they think finish line is everything. If you're so interested in the finish line, do you understand what is the finish line for life? You want to cross it quickly, is it? <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Everybody that. wants to live. <laughs> so, living here means that now you're breathing and here, this is living. So, if you're too much interested in the finish line, then you will cross it soon. That is, you'll cross it when you're alive, because so many people are living as if they are dead, dead to everything, except for a few needs that they have. A whole lot of people are dead to all other possibilities of life. In yoga, there is a very good uh, kind of a saying, which says, if you have one eye on the goal, you will have only one eye to find your way, which is very inefficient. So, you are rendering yourself incapable of life simply because you want to get somewhere. Where do you want to get? Some imagined place. Where is that place? It is just a, an exaggeration of the past you've already experienced, because you cannot imagine something that you have never seen. You cannot imagine something for which there is no data, because your mind essentially func functions from the data that you have gathered, which is essentially your past. So you want to repeat your past and then wondering why life is so boring. Heard. Heard. Yes. Repeat offenders. Reciprocity, going in circles. I hear you, I've done it before. <laughs> um, you said yoga means union, right? definition, yoga, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the root word of religion comes from legare and re. And legare means to bind together, and re means again, to bind together again, the prescriptive definition of religion. Mm -hmm. Yoga means union. Those are somewhat synonymous. Mm -hmm. um, is that fair to say yoga and religion would be uh, 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 synonymous uh, definition oh, well, or at least in its essence it would be, but not in its present form of practice. Both, I'm saying, the way yoga is practiced in America is not synonymous of union. The way religion is practed largely across the world. The way religion is practiced in the world is not synonymous yes. with what real religion so is either. So both of yes. them, in definition, uh, maybe they are same, but unfortunately the way it is practiced is very different. But why yoga is simply because this is not based on belief system. It is based on your experience, at least you know where the hell you're going. With belief system, you just believe you're going in a certain way, which gives you a certain psychological comfort, it gives you solace. So essentially, the choice is this, are you seeking solace in your life? That is, you want to just quieten your mind and be happy with little things, or are you seeking a solution for this life? Because once you have come with this human intelligence, if you don't immediately get engrossed with some petty thing around you, it is natural for every human being to think, what is all this about? Where did I come from? Where will I go? What is the process of this life? What is the meaning of this? What is the purpose of my existence here? And 
Is my existence just a blimp that I just come and vanish or is there something else? Essentially, what is the nature of my existence? This is a question that no human being can avoid unless somebody works on you very young and they tells you you are this, you are that, uh, you are going to this uh, heaven or hell or whatever, unless somebody washes you up like this, it is very, very natural for every human being to ask these questions. And these questions are good, this confusion is good because when you realize you do not know. See, people have misunderstood and unfortunately not understood the significance of I do not know. I do not know is the most significant thing in your life. Because the moment you see I do not know, the longing to know, wanting to know, seeking to know is a natural consequence. Once there is a strong seeking, knowing is not far away because anything that you wish to know about life, you don't have to search through a microscope or a telescope because you are life. This is life. Right now, I may call this by a name, right now it may have an identity in the world, but essentially this is life and this is the only life I can experience. See, right now all these beautiful trees, I don't experience them. I only experience them the way they happen within me, the way they reflect in the firmament of my mind and how I relate to them, whichever way. I will only experience these trees within myself. There is no way I can experience these trees out there and that's true for everything. You cannot experience anything out there. It can only happen within you. All experience, pain and pleasure, joy and misery, agony and ecstasy can only happen within you. Every kind of experience happens within you. When you understand this, well, if you realize I do not know, and this, then you start looking, naturally you will understand this. Once you understand this, finding the nature of your existence and becoming the master of your destiny is a natural consequence. The problem is we kill I do not know with belief systems, ideas, philosophies, ideologies. If you keep all these things aside, I think that's what in some way you did uh, in your desert, I don't know which desert you went to, you didn't go to Kalahari, did you? No, I was Sahara and then West Texas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so in a desert means you're alone. So as you said in your own words, initially you're confused and struggling, but then as you pay attention, because when you have nothing else to pay attention to, you naturally pay attention to how you work, every muscle in your body, the breath, heartbeat, everything, then you will start noticing what you call as within, or what, is, what you call as me is an entire universe and that's the only universe you've experienced. You have not experienced any other universe. The only and only universe and the only and only world that you have experienced is what has happened within you. Once you realize this, then you fix the world the way you want it, within yourself. Outside world, we do our best. So you think it's the outside saying, because I've gone through that with men, I... I, I... I felt like I had to be in the know. Only recently have I shaken hands with the fact, no, I love to be in the know. I also want to be in the know of what I don't know. Uh, and, sh and like, I want to know what I don't know and then know that I do not know. And saying, oh, that's a good thing, Matthew, was what I'll tell myself. So, but is it, is it, do we not give ourselves enough credit to, or is it, or is it, the I don't know is like a blind spot. It's like, whoa, I don't know. No, what's no, going I on. know is a blind spot. Let me clear this. I know is a blind spot. See, right now, <laughs> let's say you're driving, you're driving. A truck was coming behind you and you saw it in the mirror. So, do you see what is behind the truck? <laughs> so, you know there is a truck coming, but that's a blind spot, it blocks everything else. So, right now, you think, I know, that's like a blot in your brain, it doesn't allow you to see anything else. If you see, I do not know, I do not know is not about things around you. Fundamentally, see, you and me are sitting here talking long distance. We are sitting on a round planet, the damn thing is spinning all the time and also go hurtling through the space at tremendous speed. In the middle of nowhere, nobody knows where this cosmos begins, where it ends. In the middle of nowhere, a tiny little mechanism called solar system, in that tiny little super tiny place called planet uh, Earth, in that Texas, is a micro super space in that 
Austin city is a super, super micro space. In that you're a big man. This is the problem. Because the moment I think I know, I become big in my perception. Once I become big, inevitably I'll make a fool of myself. Whether I realize this in this life or not, uh, somebody who has eyes to see will see this is a bloody fool. <laughs> 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 yes, love it.